Okay. All right, so this screencast is gonna be about the chi-square analysis, which is a statistical test. That was hard to say, statistical test, a statistical test um, to determine if your observed results from a genetic cross match your expected results. All right, so let me share my screen and we will get started. Nope, wrong one. Cancel. Okay. All right. So here is um, the, the, the PowerPoint, which I will also post. Um, one thing to note is that Mr. Anderson does a nice job describing the chi-square as well in his video, which I will also post. All right. So the chi-square, it is used to test how likely it is that an observed distribution is due to chance. In other words, it's a goodness of fit statistic. So it measures how well your observed distribution matches what is expected, right? And with Mendelian genetics, we can definitely do predictions on what numbers would be expected, right? Using our Punnett squares. So we can, figure, we can use that expected and then compare it to what we actually observed in a cross and ask, is that due to chance or is it actually quite different, All right? So when we collect data, um, is the variation in that data due to chance or is it due to something else, right? Um, is your genetics expected from Mendelian genetics from your pun and squares or is it different due to something else such as gene linkage, which we'll talk about later, right? So gene linkage is when genes are very close together on a single chromosome. All right, so here's the equation. It is this massive equation up here, right? And don't get scared by it. It's actually quite easy. A lot of students get tripped up um, by the math, but the math is actually quite easy. You just have to do it. Um, all right, so here, this big um, kind of E looking thing just means the sum. O is gonna be your observed. E is going to be your expected, all right? So we're gonna look at that and this is our abbreviation for the chi-square. So the chi-square analysis is gonna equal the sum of, you know, observed minus expected squared over expected, all right? So the goal with the chi-square analysis is either to reject or accept a null hypothesis. And some of you in AP stats may have heard of a null hypothesis before. The null hypothesis always states there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected, all right? So null, when you think of null, you should think no significant difference, right? That is their null hypothesis. So we, when we say a null hypothesis, we're gonna say there is no significant difference between the observed and the expected frequencies. And then we're gonna use this analysis to either reject that hypothesis or accept that hypothesis. So as an example, if you flip a coin 100 times, what you expect based on, like, on statistics is that you'd get 50 times heads and 50 times tails. Those are expected results, How, right? However, sometimes we know that you're not always gonna get that, right? You're gonna get variations on that. For example, 62 heads and 38 tails. Those might be our observed results. We're, we can then use a chi-square analysis to ask, hey, are those within the range that is kind of considered expected still, or is it way off and you have like a weighted coin or something, all right? So for an example, we can use this with genetics as well. So if we do this cross, this is going to be a dihybrid because we're talking about two genes, a gene represented by the A and the gene represented by the Bs, all right? So this is going to be a dihybrid. We also recognize that this is a hetero, these are heterozygous for both genes, big letter and a little letter. So when you cross two doubly heterozygous organisms, what is your expected ratio, right? So you should memorize this. This is a nine to three to three to one ratio, right? As another quick example, what is the ratio when you cross a monohybrid heterozygotes, 
that would be your three to one ratio, right? So we know what our expected should be based on these ratios, right? And then a chi-square uses what is called degrees of freedom chart, all right? So there's a chart that you have to look up and it will help you determine whether you're going to accept or reject your chi-square, all right? So here we have our chart up here. This is called the degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom here, what it is, is the, degree to free, the degrees of freedom is the number of outcomes you expect minus one, right? So for example, if we did this cross, we expect two outcomes. So the degrees of freedom would be one. If we did this cross, we expect a nine to three to three, one to one ratio. So we expect four different outcomes. So the degrees of freedom would be three on that, right? All right, the, crit the critical value here, we are always gonna use this 0 0.05 value. And what that means is that we are 95% confident in our results, all right, 95% confident. So you're always gonna go to this 0 0.05 column and then you'll look at which degrees of freedom you have, and then you will find some number, right? If your critical number, or if the number that you get for your chi-square is less than this critical number, you are going to accept the null hypothesis that there was no significant difference between expected and observed. If your, critic, if your number is higher than this number, then you are going to reject the null hypothesis. All right, and that just means that um, that there that that there is a significant difference between. So here is a significant difference between expected and observed, and that something is just going on there. And for example, something might be gene linkage. So just a minute. I think dog has to go outside. Um, Oh, maybe not. Okay. And then, so this is what I'm going to provide you on a test, just so you have they're a hundred percent clear. Um, all right. So here you don't have to close the door all the way. Um, sorry. So here is what I will provide you on my test, which is the same as the AP bio provides you. So you're going to have the equation for you and you're going to have this degrees of freedom chart. Right. You also get, you know, standard error measure, mean, standard deviation, which we're not going to really talk about today. All right. So you will most likely on an AP test or on my test be asked to calculate between two groups, most likely. Um, so your degrees of freedom will be one. And that'll be similar on my test, just because it takes a long time, not because it's any harder. OK. Um, so let's try an example. So we're going to look here at a dye hybrid cross. And your job first is to determine the genotypes of the parents. And you can assume both are true breeding. So we have what is called a wild type fly. That means normal body color and normal red eyes. And if it's true breeding, we are going to say that normal body, homozygous, dominant, because it's true breeding and the eyes are gonna be red. So homozygous dominant as well, right? And the black body eyeless over here, because they have the recessive phenotype, those are going to be homozygous recessive for both. So what's the genotype here, right? The genotype for this is going to be, you get a big N from this one and a little n here and a big R and a little r, right? And I might have the letters different on the next page, but we know that the F1 flies are gonna be heterozygous for both genes because both of the parents were true breeding for both genes. All right, and, we, um, and what we're doing here, so we're looking at F1, they show only the wild type phenotype, and then the F1 cross together. So what we're crossing together is two double heterozygous or two, a dye hybrid looking at two genes, heterozygous for both and they're crossing, all right? And we get four outcomes. And what is our expected ratio? We know it should be a nine to three to three to one ratio, 
right? And we see all wild type for the nine, we see all recessive for the one, and then we see body color and normal or eye color normal, right? So that's our nine to three to three to one ratio. And look at these numbers that we get out. Those are gonna be important. All right, so how do we actually conduct the analysis? So again, the null hypothesis are that these two traits, black body and eyeless, are not linked. Therefore, they randomly segregate and assort independently of each other. That's a whole lot of words to say this, which is really the key point. The, um, there is no significant difference between the expected values and the observed values. In other words, the differences between the expected and the observed values are due to chance alone. All right, so once the total number of offspring is determined in each kind of nine to three to three to one ratio, right? Um, once you've determined the expected values, um, well, or sorry, once you have the observed, al observed values, you need to determine what the expected values are, right? So what are the expected values outcome up for this typical dihybrid cross, All right? So, um, so how do you do that, all right? So what we're going to do is that we are going to, I like to make a little chart. I think that's the easiest. So we're gonna look at our observed numbers. What's really important is that you have the total down here. That's gonna be really, really important. All right, so you're gonna have your total and then you can calculate the expected values, right? And the way you do that is you, multiply the expected by your appropriate ratio. So we know that the wild type phenotype, those normal ones are going to be nine sixteenths, right? And we're gonna do nine sixteenths times the total, right? For only eye differences, we are gonna have three sixteenths times the total. For black body, we would have three sixteenths times the total. <laughs> And for the completely recessive, we would have one sixteenth times the total number, All right? So that's shown on the next slide where we actually do those calculations. So again, to calculate the expected value, you multiply the total number of offspring by the expected fraction, right? And I will say the the, the reason that students usually have problems with this on an exam is that they don't get their expected fraction right. So they didn't do the original Punnett square correctly. So this is something that's really critical that you understand the genetics before you start calculating your expected fractions. All right. So then here are our expected values. All right. And then for using the chi-square test, we're going to do the following. Right, so we are going to take the sum of, um, whoops, sorry, chi-square equals the sum of, we're gonna take the observed from the one category minus the expected from that category divided by the expected plus, because we're gonna do the sum, plus the next category, one, eight, seven, seven, plus the next category, plus the last category. So I'm gonna squeeze it on here, minus 626 squared over 626, right? And so what we get for our chi-square is 0 0.298, right? And how many degrees of freedom are we gonna be dealing with? We have three categories, sorry, we have four categories, right? Given our ratio. So we're gonna have three degrees of freedom. Phenotypic class is minus one. All right, so now we're gonna use this number to look in the chart, right? So we're gonna look in our chart. We're gonna look at degrees of freedom, three, and we're gonna use this 0.05. So this number here, 7.82 is our magic number. 
And we're asking, is our chi-square number above that question mark? And our, our answer was 0.29, so no, no. So if it's below that, we will accept our null hypothesis, right? So if your number is lower, we will accept the null hypothesis, right? So what that means is that our observed and expected are not significantly different from one another, right? And so normal genetics is at play here. All right, so, oops, I think that was just a repeat. Yep, okay. And so that is an example of the chi-square and hopefully we will have time to do one of those in class again. All right, chip, chip, cheerio, bye-bye. Um...